Hi everyone, welcome to another AP Statistics video. Today I'm going to be talking about binomial distributions. These show up kind of frequently on the AP test, so it's a good idea to always make sure you can recognize them when you see them. So let's get started. Binomial distribution. Alright, um, I should note that this notation right here might show up on the AP exam, but more than likely it won't. So you don't really... This, generally, you don't need to worry about. Anyways, let's talk about binomial distribution. Each trial results in one of two mutually exclusive outcomes. And what this means is, is that you can't have, you know, part of one come out of the other. It's very dis concrete, right? It's either success or failure. It's either right or wrong. Your outcome for every trial can only be one thing. There's no gray area here. So, it's either going to be success or a failure. And so whenever you read a problem and you think, okay, it's not going to be a probability, it's not going to be any sort of description, it's going to be a yes or a no, a right or a wrong, a success or a failure, that's when you say, this problem is a binomial distribution problem. There are a fixed number of trials. This is very important. This is usually a key giveaway of binomial distribution. A fixed number of trials. Make sure you always look for that in a problem, whether or not there's a fixed number of trials. Outcomes are different trials are independent. All this means is that what you do in the previous trial will not affect the next trial. So that's what it means when trials are independent. What happens in one does not affect the other or the next. And the probability that a trial results in success is the same for all trials. <laughs> Think of it this way. If you were to flip a coin, right, the probability that you land, assuming it's a fair coin, the probability of landing on heads is one half every single time. No matter how many times I flip that coin, on the next trial, I'm, the probability that I'm going to land on heads is always is still going to be one half. So, the pro so whenever you're flipping coins, that would be an example of a binomial distribution because the probability of success is the same for all trials. The binomial random variable x is defined as the number of successes out of the fixed number. Okay, this is a big word, but what this really boils down to, or a big set of words, this, what this all boils down to is the fact that you're going to be given a problem with a certain number of trials, and you're going to be asked a, of a situation that gives a certain number of successes. And that probability, that random variable, is the probability of the number of successes. So let's move on. Let's try identifying some. Always a good skill, right? Toss a coin ten times and count the number of heads. So it needs to be in the, it needs to have a fixed number of trials, right? Because we looked at that over here. It need, there are a fixed number of trials. So let's look. Do we have a fixed number of trials? Yes, we do. What else do we need to look for? Independence. Well, if you toss a coin, and we're just going to assume it's a fair coin, what happens on the previous trial is not going to affect the next trial, right? So yes, it is independent. So is it independent? Let me just write these here. Independent. Crap. I just write I N D. You get that's independent, right? Is it independent? Yes, it is. Is it a fixed number of trials? Let's write trials over here. And we know that's also true. It's only got ten. And is the probability of success remain the same? That's right. Just probability. That's right. Prob. Right. So try. Okay. Independence, trials, and probability. And is the probability of each the num of getting heads each time the same? Yes, it is. Right. So that would make yes. This is a binomial distribution. Let's try another one. Deal ten cards from a shuffle deck and count the number of red cards. Well, a we don't have a fixed number of trials, do we? It doesn't say we're going to do this a certain number of times. So already we can rule out that it's not a bi it does not it is not a binomial distribution. But furthermore, if you were to shuffle a deck of red cards. There's no way you could say how many red cards you could get each time. So the pro so you can't really say this is success or fail, nor does the probability of r red cards in the hand you draw the same each time. So we can't call it binomial. Let's try one more. Two parents of genes for o, t o and A blood types count the number of children with blood type O. Again, no fixed number, right? No fixed number of trials, so it can't be binomial. So let's try working... Let's look at the formula to, to determine probability. Now, this is a big formula. 
but I'm gonna walk you through it. This right here, I have you. This is a symbol for the combinations, right? Right down, and we'll just draw an arrow to it down here. Which is n choose k, right? And let's look. N is going to be the number of trials. K is going to be the number of successes you want. And P, which is the same P over here, is the probability of success. So, it'll help, it'll, you'll get better at remembering it once you use it a couple times, but let's take a closer look at this right here, the combination, the N choose K. I know it's a little gouty, but forgive me. Well, whenever you see that, you need to do, this is what this N choose K, or this N choose K, translates into. N factorial divided by K factorial times N minus K factorial. A lot of words, right? But I think doing an example will help you understand this a little better. The number of inaccurate gauges in a group of four in a, is a binomial random variable. If the probability of defect is 0.1, what is the probability that only one is defective? Well, right away we can say, hey, this is binomial because they tell us, right? Binomial random variable. And furthermore, it's got a fixed number of trials. And it gives you a fixed probability as well. And they want to know the probability that one is defective. So here's that formula again, right? The probability that only one is defective. And you see we got a lot of numbers. So let's see if we can identify parts of that formula. Well, we know the probability of success, the probability of finding a defect, which is success, is 0.1, right? So that's P. And we know 1 minus P is simply 0.9, right? 1 minus P. Raise, and here we're going to raise it to the power of N, which is 4, the number of trials, minus K. The number of successes, 1, because we only want one success, right? And here's that pesky, what is it? N choose K, right? So what does that translate into? So let's go over here. That, let's see, 4 choose 1 is saying 4 factorial over 1 1 factorial times 4 minus 1 factorial, right? And that simplifies, um, assuming you know how to do factorials. If not, just give them a quick Google. They're not too hard. That simplifies to 4, right? And so now we can plug in. It'll be 4. We can just take that equals 4, right? So 4, here, I'm moving down here. 4 times point 0.1, because that's a probability of success, so that was our, this is our n choose k, right? Which we simplified to 4, times our p to the power of k, times 1, or, 1 minus p, which is 0 0.9, to the power of n minus k, which is 4 minus 1 equals 3. And if you do that all, so 4 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.1, let's see, 4 times 0.9 to the power cubed times 3 times 0 0.1, you get 0 0.2196. You know, I'll just circle it up here, 0.2196. And that's saying the probability of your of one gauge being inaccurate out of a set of four is going to be 0.2916. All right, and that'll pretty much set you up for all the binomial probabilities you need to know. I hope you enjoyed it, and ask me if you have any questions. Bye-bye.